Luke was 15 when he died. He'd been swimming hard. He'd enjoyed his session in the water. And just before he wanted to get changed, he decided to swim his two lengths. And he fainted just before he got there. Uh, he drowned, his lungs filled with water, but he did not struggle. He didn't cry out for help. And unfortunately, there was nobody keeping an eye on him. And as a result, he, he died. Simply put, it's a faint happening underwater. It's when someone is swimming underwater, usually for quite a long period, a bit of an endurance underwater swimming, and suddenly they run out of oxygen. And it looks as if they've just fainted and they'll sink to the bottom of the swimming pool. And if they don't get aid straight away, they'll drown. I've seen loads of boys in particular over the years, you know, trying to hold their breath for as many lengths as they can possibly do under the water. Is this something that's, that's really dangerous that we should be paying a lot of attention to? Well, I don't want to give the impression that underwater swimming is, is necessarily dangerous. What we want to do is to stop unnecessary deaths happening. And there are some ways using hyperventilating and using extremely um, hard exercise before um, going underwater swimming that can trick the body into thinking it's got plenty of oxygen when in fact it hasn't and that's what leads to shallow water blackout. So how does the body get, get tricked like that? It's not the way that oxygen goes down in the blood that makes us breathe again. It's the rise in carbon dioxide from exertion. So when you try to hold your breath as long as you can, um, you, you, you have this sensation that I must breathe. Uh, and that gets stronger and stronger until you, you have to give in to it. And it's known as the breaking point. And that is when the carbon dioxide level has risen to such a level that it's forcing you to breathe. Now, if you're swimming underwater and before diving in, you've done lots of exercise or you've sat on the, the side of the pool and have hyperventilated. So taking in lots of air basically. Yes. Lots of lungfuls. Yeah. In the idea perhaps that, that you're going to have more oxygen as a result. You won't in fact because it's very hard to increase the amount of oxygen that you've got in your, in your blood. But what you do by that is blow off all your carbon dioxide. So your carbon dioxide level is really low. And then you're vigorously swimming, using up lots of oxygen. And your oxygen level falls below the level you need to keep conscious before the carbon dioxide level has gone up enough to make you want to breathe again. And you won't necessarily know anything about it. You'll be you know, swimming, thinking you're doing really well, and then suddenly, you'll just black out. So I guess in a nutshell, the best advice that we can give them, and obviously you have expert advice, but I have sort of years of swimming advice, is just realise that water can be a dangerous place. And if you're going to go in and push the boundaries, that someone is, is paying attention and watching you all the time. I think that's it, exactly. Thank you very much. Now, of course, I spend a lot of my life in the water and shallow water blackout is a problem that we're trying to address and knowledge is partly going towards the way of addressing that. Please don't be frightened about going in the water. Enjoy it. It's a great form of exercise and pretty safe.